Section 13.4 is the sine function. I can identify properties of the sine function and I can graph sine curves. Big ideas. As the terminal side of an angle rotates about the origin, beginning at 0 degrees, its sine value on the unit circle increases from 0 to 1, decreases from 1 to negative 1, and then increases back to 0. Remember the sine is the y value. A non-translated sine function can be completely described in terms of its amplitude and period. The sine function y equals sine of x matches the measure theta of an angle in standard position with the y coordinate of a point on the unit circle. Uh, see page 851 uh, for a diagram. So same thing here that they talked about in the um, big idea. If we start at zero, our y value gets higher and higher and higher, then it starts getting lower all the way to negative one and then up to zero again. Okay, it's like they just kind of unfold the circle along the axis, um, along the theta axis. Instead of the x-axis, it's the theta axis um, and give you the y values there. So um, estimating sine back, uh, values graphically. What is a reasonable estimate for each value from the graph on page 852? Check your estimate with a calculator. So if we look at page 862, um, it's a similar graph to what I have here. Uh, mine just continues on just a little bit further. So we're gonna use this graph here. Okay, so when we're trying to find um, sine two here, remember that pi is approximately 3.14. So pi over 2 is 3.14 divided by 2, or 1.57. So 2, if this is 3.14, that's about 3. That's about 1.5, and, and 2 is going to be about here. I don't know. Uh, it's approximate. But I'm going to go right about here is where sine is at 2. And I'm going to say that's a little bit less than 1. I'm going to go like 0.9. Um, some of you might have said 0.8, some of you might have said 0.95, doesn't matter. Um, now we're going to check that with our calculator. When we do that, we have to make sure that our calculator is in radians. Um, there's no degree after the 2, which means we're in radians. So to do that, next to the second key is a DRG key. Click that. It's going to say DEG for degrees, RAD for radians. Go over to the radians and select it. Now, the bottom of your calculator, like above your up arrow on your screen, should say RAD on the bottom. Okay, now type sine 2, and you should get approximately 0.909. Okay. Um, in our calculator. Um, so, if you didn't get that, uh, you didn't get that radian key selected. Now, for part B, we're looking for pi, and pi is an exact value here. Pi is right here. So our value of sine at pi is zero. Now um, we can do the same thing. We're going to take sine pi, and it gives us zero. And we don't have to change it to radians every time, but we do have to change it back to degrees if we need degrees. So depending on like what science class you're in, um, you may need things in degrees. So you're going to have to switch back. Um, Throughout this chapter, we're going to do some things in radians, some things in degrees, so you'll have to change back there as well. Okay, a uh, reasonable estimate for each value from the graph here. Again, pi is 3.14, and this is 1.57. So we have like a 1, a 2, a 3 probably, or pretty close anyway. I'm going to go ahead right here and say that's about 3. So for me, um, if this is 1 and this is 0, I'm going to say it's about 0.2. Okay, now I'm going to check it in my calculator. Sine, 3, again, make sure you're still in radians. And it's actually approximately 0.141. So I was a little bit off there, uh, but that's okay. I was at least kind of in the ballpark. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is what this says right here. It's hard to see, but this is 3 pi over 2.
and that's our lowest value, our minimum value, and that's at negative 1. Remember, on a unit circle, everything is one unit away from the center, um, and so our lowest value, our minimum, is at negative 1. We can check it on our calculator. Sine of 3 pi divided by 2, close your parentheses, we get negative 1. So that worked for both.